Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Exam Tricks and Tips. This channel is designed to empower cloud learners with the knowledge and strategies they need to confidently ace their cloud examination. Please subscribe to this channel as it encourages me to create quality course material in this subject area. This comprehensive series is designed to prepare you for the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. As you know, AWS Cloud Practitioner is one of the most popular and valuable cloud certification exams. Throughout the series, I'll dwell into exam questions, providing you with insights and strategies to tackle similar questions on the actual exam. The series is entirely free, so please subscribe to this channel as it encourages me to create quality course material in this subject area. Hello everyone, Exam Tricks and Tips channel has reached 100 subscriber milestone this week. Thanks for all your love and support. Please share, subscribe, like and comment to help grow this community. Thank you. Welcome to episode 9. We'll cover questions 56 to 16 this episode. Please like, share, subscribe to get regular updates on new episode releases. Let's get started. Question number 56. A company is running and managing its own Docker environment on Amazon EC2 instances. The company wants an alternative to help manage cluster size, scheduling, and environment maintenance. Which AWS service meets this requirement? AWS Lambda, AWS RDS, AWS Fargate, Amazon Athena. Please read the question and mark your keywords. You can also try to find the correct answer. I hope uh, you read the question. Let's see uh, the keywords. Keywords here uh, is, as shown here, a, doc a Docker environment. So let's go through the services. Uh, this one, now that we have done a lot of questions uh, recently, uh, we are going to now adopt an elimination technique wherever it's possible. So if you go through the options, Amazon Athena, that's a query service. It's an interactive query, query service that uh, can work on S3 and other types of data and can help you uh, if you plug in with the QuickSight dashboard, it can help you create an uh, amazing dashboard for management or for other stakeholders. This has nothing to do with Docker environment, so I'll rule that out. Amazon RDS, that's a database service. It's a relational database service. It's nothing to do with Docker environment again. So that's the second one that will be ruled out. AWS Lambda. So Lambda is a serverless compute service. It's primarily designed for you know creation of some application code which can be run without you needing to actually spin off an instance, et cetera. It's not a Docker environment. It has nothing to do with managing cluster size, scheduling, or environment maintenance. So even that's ruled out. So you're left with AWS Fargate. Now, you may or may not have read about this service, but if you get this question in the exam, even without you knowing what Fargate does, by elimination technique, you could you would know that you know that's the only service left because the other options are definitely incorrect. So AWS Fargate is the right answer for this particular question. It's a serverless compute engine for containers that simplifies the management of containerized applications. So whenever it's an exam tip for you, whenever you see a container or a Docker environment in the question, most uh, appropriate answer will be AWS Fargate. So that's the answer for you. So we got our answer. Answer C is the option C is the answer for this particular question. Uh, exam tip uh, is whenever you you know see a containerized Docker environment related. A service that you need from AWS or from the you have to choose one from the options available. You should go for Fargate. That's that's a tip for you. Uh, let's go through some reference documentation from AWS. As you can see, uh, you know the headline itself says it's a serverless computer for containers. So that's the container service. There's a short video here. Please go through it. I think that will help you understand the service better in a very short span of time. We'll go through the documentation, uh, benefits, how it works, use cases to understand it uh, a bit more in detail. Uh, but from an exam perspective, uh, it's quite uh, straightforward. You just need to know the application. Whenever you have a question around uh, container application, virtualization, uh, you go for Fargate. Question number 57, a company wants to run a NoSQL database on Amazon EC2 instance. Which task is priority of AWS in this scenario? Please read the question, go through the options, mark your keywords. We have an EC2 instance here, and uh, the question is about a shared responsibility model regarding what's the responsibility of AWS, what's the responsibility of uh, customer. And in this particular case, we want to know what is AWS's responsibility. Now, you, you, we've done uh, similar questions in past. Uh, we've gone through shared responsibility model in detail. Essentially, uh, when when you move to cloud, physical infrastructure maintenance is the responsibility of AWS, irrespective of whether you're going for services like uh, EC2 or managed services like uh, serverless compute or RDS, etc. So bare minimum, uh, you don't have to manage any physical infrastructure. And EC2 is that uh, level of service. And as you can say, we are going, uh, instead of elimination or going through all the options, I'm going to go to the answer straight away. You can see option C, patching of physical infrastructure that hosts EC2 instance. It's very obvious now, after going through shared responsibility model uh, several times and multiple questions, you should be able to answer this. If you... Uh, 
are looking at this video directly, I would recommend you to go through the series, uh, episode one to eight, and you will find uh, questions around shared responsibility model uh, almost uh, every alternate video. So this is the correct answer, but uh, now that we got the correct answer, we'll go through other options. And as you know, uh, in case of EC2, uh, apart from managing of physical infrastructure, guest operating system, managing of database availability, managing of configuration of the rules, access, permissions, configuration of even security firewall, which is an option here, all of this is a customer responsibility. Hence, we rule all of these options, and that's our validation for the selected answer that we have. Our answer is option C, patching of physical infrastructure that hosts the ECD instance. Example for you is AWS Shared Responsibility Model. It's a very important topic from uh, exam perspective. You get a variety of questions around EC2 instances. Basically, you you get variation of questions by where the service is replaced, and then you have to you know guess. Uh, where what's an AWS responsibility? What is a customer responsibility? Why is this topic? Because uh, it's a very uh, good scoring area. Let's move to the next question. Question number 58. Which AWS service or tools can identify right sizing opportunities for Amazon EC2 instance? We have to choose two answers from available five options. Please uh, read the question carefully. Go through the options. Mark your keywords. I hope uh, you read the question. Mark your keywords. So here are the keywords. We need to identify opportunities for right sizing Amazon EC2 instance. You have an EC2 instance, it's already running. And depending on the usage, you obviously don't want to have an, uh, much more capacity than you need. So you want to right size it and you want to find out what tools can help you from AWS to right size EC2 instance infrastructure. Uh, again, on this question, we have done many services in the previous question. So we would like now to use the elimination technique. And the first one uh, for me, Amazon SageMaker, that's a machine learning model service. It's nothing to do with uh, right sizing or optimizing EC2 instance. So it's a it's a first uh, obvious choice to eliminate. It's incorrect option for me. Or another one, yeah, CodeGuru, Amazon CodeGuru. It provides a recommendation and insights to developers to improve your code quality and performance. So this service is uh, Amazon CodeGuru. This is a service which helps developer insights and recommendations to help improve their code quality and performance. So it's related to your code uh, quality. Uh, it's not related to uh, system optimization or right-sizing system or, or right-sizing EC2 instance. So that is also incorrect option for this particular question. Then we have left with uh, Cost Explorer, Billing Conductor, Compute Optimizer. Now, Billing Conductor, that's again a wrong service. Uh, cost Explorer and Billing Conductor kind of sit in the similar domain of billing cost, etc. But Billing Conductor is a service that help you manage AWS billing and cost. It's not going to recommend you or help you optimize the usage of your services. So that's another wrong answer ruled out. So we're left with the AWS cost, cost Explorer and AWS Compute Optimizer. And these are the right answers, but let's go through. So what does Cost Explorer do? So Cost Explorer analyzes historical and current cost of data, and then you can use that analysis to identify which EC2 instances are underutilized. You can then uh, do configuration and downsize it. So Cost Explorer tells you about the cost, but then it helps you with the uh, underutilization of certain services as well. So correct answer. Uh, last option, option E, Compute Optimizer. As the name suggests, uh, it is a service that will provide recommendation for optimizing your AWS resources, including EC2. So it, it, it's, its main purpose in life is to uh, optimize your resources, and that's the service we are looking for. So correct answer for this particular question, question number 58, is option A, AWS Cost Explorer, and option E, Compute Optimizer. Both the services will help you optimize your services and right-size your services so that you don't spend unnecessarily money on the services or the capacity that you don't use. So here is uh, some documentation for your reference with respect to right-sizing. You can go through it and the important bit, and you'll get the link for all of this in the description of the video. If you go to the section of the this particular link, you will see what are the services that will help you optimize uh, compute resources, AWS Cost Explorer, AWS Compute Optimizer, exactly what we saw. Uh, because these are two new services, I have also given you reference of the documentation for both the services, AWS Compute Optimizer. It gives you a recommendation to optimize use of your AWS resources. The name uh, tells you what it is, its purpose is. And AWS Cost Explorer, now this is obviously have a dual purpose. It helps you visualize, understand, and manage your AWS cost over time. But then as part of that, you also get the insight where you can see the underutilization of certain resources. And you can then use that data to fine tune your uh, services to optimize their usage. So that's it on this question. Let's go to the next question. Question number 59, uh, which of the following are benefits of using AWS Trusted Advisor? We have to choose two answers. Please read the question, highlight your keywords. Also see what options from option A to E are 
according to you correct answers. Here's my version of uh, markups. Essentially, it's a single keyword, AWS Trusted Advisor. And you know, we have done this in previous videos as well. AWS Trusted Advisor is a recommendation service. It gives you recommendation to optimize uh, your services from performance perspective, from security perspective. Now, again on here, I think because we know the service, we can quickly pick up the answer and you should be able to now, by this time, uh, get to the correct answer. Uh, either go to elimination if you haven't seen the service because you know the other service or you have gone through that service in previous episodes or you know it as part of your current program, you should be able to now go to the correct answer straight away. So option C, uh, if it's read detecting of underutilized resources to save the cost, yes, AWS Trusted Advisor gives you all the recommendations around optimization of the service. So that's the correct answer for me. It's a service that helps you to optimize the cloud environments across various dimensions. It includes cost, it includes performance, it includes security, it includes fault tolerance, it includes the service limits, so it covers all the aspects. So it's a correct answer, option C. Uh, and as we've seen, it is it does provide you recommendation around security as well. So option D as well, that's a correct answer for me, improving security by proactively monitoring the AWS environment. So, so option D is also a correct answer for me. Now let's see why option A, B, and E are not the correct answers in this case. So option A, providing high performance, con option A, providing high performance container orchestration. Now we've seen in, uh, earlier in this video, for, if it's a container service, we are talking about Fargate. It's nothing to do with AWS Trusted Advisor. So option A is wrong for that. Uh, trusted Advisor doesn't do uh, orchestration or container application. Option B, creating and rotating of encryption keys. Now, that's not the purpose of Trusted Advisor. You can get recommendation around security, but it doesn't do any of creation and rotating of uh, encryption keys. So this this service is not for that. And the last option, implementing and first tagging across AWS resources. Again, you can do the tagging of resources independently as you want just to make sure. And that's more of a billing cost related service where you can then use the tags to group uh, certain services and find out the usage. For example, if, if you're not using organization, you can tag the services uh, by departments or a group of users and then that will enable you to group the cost or maybe usage of the application by those tags and then eventually uh, getting you a report the way you expected uh, based on the tags so incorrect uh, answer for me uh, option e is wrong so that's it we got our answer of option c and d are the correct answer in this case now that we have gone through you know lots of services uh, and the questions are getting repeated, which includes the services that we know. We are going quicker on this particular video. So that's it on this question. Let's move to the next question. Question number 60, which of the following is an advantage that user experiences when they move on-premises workloads to AWS Cloud? Another simple question. Uh, we've done this uh, multiple times now. You know, not exactly this question, but the concept has been covered several times over this series. So mark your keyword. Here's my version of keywords. Uh, essentially, we want to know what is the advantage of moving on-premise workloads to AWS Cloud. Now, you know, when you move on-premise workload to AWS Cloud, you don't have to worry about managing the data center. You do not have data center if you fully migrate to AWS Cloud. And the option A is exactly that uh, particular advantage, elimination of expenses of running and maintaining data centers. You still have costs. It's not that you're not paying anything to use the infrastructure yes you will be paying to aws or cloud any other cloud organization that you're using but that will be on ps2 basis you don't have to worry about maintaining data center maintaining hardware maintaining personnel to manage this data center or physical security of the data center so all that expenses direct expenses are eliminated you will use aws infrastructure and you'll pay for those services based on the model that you selected mostly ps go so this is the correct answer option b price discount that are identical to discount from hardware providers now this is incorrect. There is no relation between what discount you'll be getting from AWS versus what discounts you were getting from the hardware providers. There is no relation. This is a completely different model. It's an incorrect answer for me. Option C, distribution of all operational controls to AWS. Now, that's not true as well. We've done shared responsibility model multiple times. The, the operational controls are shared between AWS and customer uh, on high level. Management of cloud is AWS responsibility, but what is within cloud configuration, maintenance, availability, uh, user roles, configuration, et cetera, it's all a responsibility of customer. So you do not uh, hand over all the operational control to AWS. So it's an incorrect uh, answer. Option C is wrong. Elimination of all operational expenses. Again, this is incorrect. Uh, you do have operational expenses. You effectively eliminate CapEx, uh, capital expenditure, when you move to cloud because you're not uh, paying anything upfront to buy hardware or create data centers, but you'll be paying on pay-as-you-go basis, ongoing basis, 
to AWS for usage of their services, which will be far part of operational expenses. So there's no elimination of operational expenses. This is an incorrect uh, answer. So option A is the correct answer for this particular question. We got our answer. And I believe this is the last question of this particular episode. That brings us to the end of this episode. I'll see you in the next episode of this series soon. If you enjoy this content and want to stay updated on future episodes, then please subscribe to this channel. Your support motivates me to continue producing high quality content in this area. Thank you for watching. See you soon in the next episode of this series. Yeah.